This is a story about exploitation and complicated family dynamics. There are tens of millions of dollars at stake, as well as the legacy of someone who has helped rewrite the science of human biology. It's a story that people talk about behind closed doors, but fear retribution if they were to take it out publicly. More than that, it's a story of a man who covertly controls just about everything that a community of millions of people see. I never take them. ice baths. I, I never take them. So fuck <laughs> this. I, I got a trauma, man, from the ice baths, you know? You know what my dad's possibly that somebody else is going to take over who's got more brains. This is the story of an organization that you know as the Wim Hof Method, where what you see isn't always what really is going on. But without me, there is no heart, there is no content, mm -hmm. there is nothing. The video you are watching is not the original. When it originally aired on January 2nd, 2023, it got thousands of views in just a matter of a few hours before it was taken down by Anum Hoff, who issued about 10 copyright complaints through YouTube's legal system. Not only on this video, but on all of the videos that had anything to do with Wim Hoff on my channel. Nevertheless, the video survived long enough to galvanize support across the community. I've gotten hundreds of messages of support and emails from all over the world. I even had a chance to talk with Wim on the record about the video the very next day, and he agreed that it was time to change the way Inner Fire works. Here's a clip. He's got the codes, he's got the keys, he's got this and that. And I, int I entrusted him. Okay, look, in the beginning, he did the right things. Uh, I, I needed a person like that, an idiot, uh, on, on a pedal stone to get me, uh, to uh, uh, to create a frame work. Mm -hmm. hey, that's nice, and it's all done, and that worked magically. But uh, going on, uh, 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 continuing on that path. Now, it, that is not needed anymore. This is over. It's done. It needs yeah. to shift. There's a link to that conversation uh, down below. Now, even though I believe that everything I used in the original video was done under the principle of fair use, on January 4th, I released a new version of the video with all of the potentially copyrightable images taken out so that the video you're about to see well, it's going to look a little odd, mainly with black screens where Anum thought I was misusing Anum's or Wim's image. But even that didn't stop Anum's campaign to silence my reporting. He has since issued numerous privacy complaints against this channel and accused me of defamation. He sent letters to my hosting provider saying that even using the name Wim Hof in print is a violation of trademarks that he owns. There have been lawyers involved, unproductive conversations with YouTube's support team, and let's just say a lot more drama than I would have expected for simply reporting on a topic that I've been covering for the last 10 years. All of this because Anum Hoff does not want you to see this video. He does not want to publicly address some of the very real concerns about Inner Fire's business practices that I talk about here. Before I go and return you to the original video, I want you to do two things. First, please subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put a link down there, down below, so that you can get it. There is no telling if Anum will be able to use his influence to get my channel taken down. I also want you to know that I'm mirroring all of my videos from now on on Rumble, where it is much more difficult to remove content that ruffles someone else's feathers. After conversations with people in the broader Wim Hof community and YouTube's administrators, I've decided to update a few details in the original video. You will see my head in this white shirt pop up here again soon. Lastly, 
I'm going to include a few updates at what I see as positive changes happening in the Inner Fire community after this video came out at the very end of this admittedly already too long video. Many of these changes would not have occurred without the conversations that I got started. If you've watched the amazing rise of Wim Hof from almost homeless beginnings to international superstardom, you might have an inkling that it can get a little convoluted as we go through tense family dynamics, corporate records, trademarks, and yeah, a whole lot of money. Getting a handle on the big picture will take a little while to unpack, but I promise to you that it will be worth it. Because this story has never been told before, in the end, you'll understand how Wim Hof no longer owns his own name, how his son, Anam Hof, is the sole shareholder of the entire Hof empire, and why instructors of the Wim Hof method fear the future of their careers. Hear that, and they've lost so many good instructors. Before we really get started, though, you might wonder why I'm the one bringing this information out now, and, for that matter, what my motives are. If you just want to get to the meat, then go and skip ahead. I've got you. Uh, the next chapter in the progress bar down below uh, should get you there. Still here? Awesome. I consider Wim Hof a friend. I've been doing the breath work and the cold training he taught me for a decade. I've written two books about how meeting him has fundamentally changed my life for the better, and I've been a front row witness to his rise to international fame. Along the way, I've occasionally done public events with Wim, media appearances about the method, and through my work probably inspired hundreds of thousands of people to sign up for workshops and online courses. As a journalist, I only get paid when people buy my books, and absolutely buy my books, but I don't have any financial ties to the Wim Hof Method myself. This means that unlike hundreds of Wim Hof Method instructors who have also been on the front row of this whole story, um, I can work independently, and that means a lot. Now, back in 2013, I was making a name for myself as someone who debunks charlatan gurus and false prophets. I'd spent a few months investigating the death of a meditator in the Arizona desert for a project that eventually became the book The Enlightenment Trap. I'd seen the dark side of the spiritual path firsthand and collected several journals of people who went mad or even died on meditation retreats as they grasped for superpowers. So you could say that I was more than a little surprised when I went to meet Wim in Poland in February 2013 and discovered that instead of debunking Hoff, I ended up doing the same things he could. Eventually, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro without a shirt on just to prove the powers inside of all of us are really available. That became part of a book I did called What Doesn't Kill Us that spent a few months on the New York Times bestseller list. And for one glorious day, was the number one audiobook on the planet. Now, that's the public story, at least. But there was another one that I didn't tell, or, well, maybe I just didn't emphasize it. During the entire reporting process, and for years after the book came out, there was always a shadow over my research that left a kernel of doubt in my mind about the organization that was rapidly growing up around Wim Hof. Even though the specific practices and techniques clearly had a profound impact on human physiology, the organization started to behave in ways that didn't sit well with me. Just about every interaction I had with Wim's son, Anam Hoff, the man who controls the entire business, was strained. Everything always came back down to the question of money for him. When he learned that I was going to write a book about the Wim Hof method, he wanted to know what his ultimate cut would be. When I couldn't promise him immediate profits, Anum tried to cut off access to Wim and then demanded that I change parts of the book that I had let him review during the fact-checking process. As an independent journalist, this was a problem because my duty is to the truth, not to someone's public image. 
but I did make some small changes because my goal in What Doesn't Kill Us was to talk about the physiology of the method, not the organization. For instance, I cut out a section on Wim Hof about how he got his scar on his abdomen because Anum thought that it made his father look bad. Now, I've tried to correct the record recently with a video about that event. But more importantly, I only barely alluded to the structural issues within the organization of Inner Fire in the book itself. For six years, I've mostly kept quiet, figuring that someone else would eventually bring the story forward. You could even say that I had a level of PTSD uh, based on the sour interactions that I had with Anum, like when he used his control over Wim's social media accounts to block me on Twitter, when he called me a frenemy in the Wim Hof newsletter, when he told me to fly to Amsterdam, to Prague, to meet him for an interview, and then he never showed up. He just ghosted me. And then there was also this other time when Anum issued a takedown notice on the YouTube trailer for my book, What Doesn't Kill Us, on the week that I launched the book. All of this was pretty painful personally. And for two years, Every time I saw Anum's face on a social media feed, I'd feel a little sick to my stomach. After all, I believed that I was helping spread the word of an amazing way for people to take control of their lives uh, all throughout the world. I was on Team Wim, and it hurt to feel attacked by the official organization. Now, I'd alluded to these concerns in podcasts and when producers at ESPN, BBC, Channel 4, or History Channel contacted me about being on their programs, but I really didn't want to rock the boat myself. I mean, no one wanted to rock the boat. The Wim Hof Method was helping millions of people, and every single reported wanted to highlight the good and minimize or even ignore the bad. So this was the situation. And then, a few weeks ago, I put out a video about how 10 years doing the Wim Hof Method radically improved my life. And I once again added a few lines about my concerns about the organization. I said that Anum Hof was, quote, not the nicest guy, and that I don't much like working with the group. And that Wim Hof has been blocked from seeing his own posts on social media accounts. That's when two things happened that made me reconsider my relative silence. The first thing was that I got dozens of private messages and comments from Wim Hof Method instructors who had their own concerns about the current leadership and how they felt they were being exploited and even unsafe in their winter workshops. And then there was second, is when Anum Hoff posted a comment on my video where he publicly called me a disappointment and a bad journalist and someone who was making money off his father unethically. Now at this point, I felt that I just, I just have to respond. So I've spent the last few weeks carefully documenting what I see as fundamental problems within the Wim Hof organization. Along the way, I come through publicly available documents, leaked memos, and video and interviews that are posted online freely. I've spoken to current and former certified Wim Hof Method instructors, celebrities who've endorsed Hof only to eventually reject their affiliations with the company, other members of Wim Hof's immediate family, and of course, Wim himself. Now, as a side note, when you see these interviews of Wim that I put here, uh, they're all on the record, but they always happen at like spontaneous times and at odd hours of the day. So the footage you see of Wim is not ideal. And I'm gonna post the unedited version of that conversation uh, so that people can see the exact context of what he is saying, just in case you wanna argue that I'm ripping things um, out immorally because I'm a bad journalist like Anum thinks that I am. Now, most people who I talked to were afraid to go on the record. They feared retribution. They believed that Anum would use his influence to ruin their careers. And I can't say that I blame them. Some people actually have had their careers ruined and didn't want to risk sticking their heads up again to get hit again. So I've had to disguise some people's identities and have left a lot of information out at the request of my sources. 
their fear resembles the former cult members who I'd interviewed in the past. They were more fearful than people I'd interviewed in my years covering organized crime and even organ trafficking. Which is weird, right? Now, all of this to say is just a long way for me to tell you that the reason I'm putting this out isn't because of a personal grudge against Anam Hoff. It's because I care deeply about the future of the techniques that Wim has brought into this world. And I worry about the lasting legacy of Wim Hof's teachings long after the time when Wim eventually passes away. I worry about how the corporate structure of a profit-driven organization undermines Wim's desire to give everyone a chance to benefit from the power of the cold. After all, Wim's goal is clear. In the end, really, when I'm gonna die, I, 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 I just want to see the methods spread all over the world, and good people will make the distinction. A core tenet of the Wim Hof method is that a dose of ice-cold water is the sort of beneficial stress that will trigger positive internal changes to someone's body. I view my investigative journalism in a similar light. Applying the appropriate stress to the organization will make a better method for everyone. That's because this isn't just a story about some internal politics of a fitness organization. It's a story about the legacy of a method that I really do believe has the potential to change the world for the better. I'm doing this video because it's the right thing to do. I often call Wim Hof a prophet and a madman. But one thing I would never say is that he has any idea about business. He spends his time thinking about breath work and the sensations he uses to talk to his autonomic nervous system, not the structure of an organization that will spread his message across the planet. If once I begin to corrupt myself with all these details, little voices here and there, hundreds and thousands, then I will lose track with my own mission. It is no secret that he needs help. And this is where Anum, to his lasting credit, contributed a huge amount of value. Without structure, Wim is just another madman yelling into the air. Back in 2010, before they began collaborating, Wim Hof was seen as more of a sideshow act than someone whose techniques could change our fundamental relationship to our bodies and the environment. I sell air and, and, and cold. <laughs> I'm a marketing guy, you know. <laughs> To understand how they started working together, we need to go to the beginning. Growing up in the Hoff family has, historically speaking, been pretty difficult. In his early years, Wim moonlit as a postman, a climbing instructor in the Pyrenees, and married a beautiful Basque woman named Olaya when he was 22 years old. They quickly had two children, but Olaya was beset by mental health struggles and took her own life when Anum was just 12 years old. Unfortunately for everyone in this story, Wim was not up to the challenge of single fatherhood. This is the story, the real story. When he lost his mother and I lost my wife, that devastated us so deeply that it could not be processed in the moment as we were. We just had to continue. And then this has changed the person. It has made him not to trust the father. Because the, it, it, how can you control that your mother has gone? For a while, the family lived basically homeless in a squat house in Amsterdam. And then when left his kids alone to fend for themselves when he went off to live with a woman in another city far away. As the eldest, this meant that Anum had to step up and raise his siblings alone. These were dark years for the Hoff kids, and Wim's absence bred intense animosity. His children shunned him, and for 10 years, Wim lived without contact with his family at the same time that he developed his breathing and cold exposure techniques. Dutch newspapers and documentaries started picking up on his story, and he was getting a little famous. 
But Wim's affairs were still a mess. He fired his agent around the same time that his second marriage ended. Just before I started with uh, Ana, I had a 30,000 uh, euro debt, tax debt, because my former wife had not paid my tax. Now, at what might have been the lowest point in his life since Elias' death, Wim wanted to fix things with his family. He reconnected with Anum and told him about his problems. Nineteen years ago, I saw an opportunity with my dad. I, I haven't, I didn't spoke to him like for ten years or something. I made my little website, blah blah. He broke up with his wife uh, uh, in those times, and I saw an opportunity. I grabbed it, you know, because uh, I, he was famous as the Iceman. Wim Hof Method did not exist. It was like, but he did have a lot of attention towards him. He saw an opportunity. And it was only after that Wim had already gotten famous that Anum decided to rekindle things with his father and turn a tiny travel company that he owned called Inner Fire into Wim's official mouthpiece. Anum started managing all of Wim's affairs and used the proceeds from media appearances and speaking events to pay off Wim's government debt. By 2013, things were going well enough that they could buy a small farmhouse in the Polish countryside and invited me to attend the first multi-day training program for the story that I was writing for Playboy. Soon thereafter, Anum built an online training course and mobile phone app that sells for roughly $300 and became the company's main moneymaker. Now, if that was all that there was to the story, then we could all say that Anum was an unmitigated force for good in his father's career. But while Ana might be savvy in marketing, one thing he isn't is a practitioner of the method. You know, I don't practice his method, right? And that's a little weird, isn't it? Over the course of about 11 years, Anum has grown a company around his father's image that sells ice and breathing exercises, but he doesn't practice the method himself, even though he claims that he developed the practices on the official website. As for ice baths, he pretty much only gets in when he wants to post social media that he has done them, as like proof. So I never take ice baths. I, I never take them. So fuck <laughs> this, I, I got a trauma, man, from the ice baths, you know? This? Well, it's a big problem for me, and a lot of people in the broader Wim Hof community. When someone doesn't practice what they preach, it undermines the credibility of the message. It feels cynical. It feels like this was only about the money that the company brings in, not the practices that those of us who do them regularly have grown to love. It makes us wonder about the sincerity of the opportunity that Anum saw when he rekindled things with his dad. It is no secret that Wim and his son butt heads all the time. I had clashes you don't want to know. <laughs> Wim often complains about Anum on stage and on podcasts. He got yelled at by Joe Rogan to just shut mm -hmm. the fuck up. So, I mean, I understand he wants the recognition, but he's using his dad as a mascot. A mascot or even a puppet? Because if he doesn't believe in what he's selling, or at least he can't stomach the actual practices, then what else is in it for Anum other than money? Well, it turns out it's control of everything that anyone ever learns about the real Wim Hof. Fuck yeah, it's mine. <laughs> it's not Wim's. <laughs> it's not Wim's. <laughs> In the clip I just played, Anum is referencing a joke that Wim often tells, but Anum claims was his all along. Well, that is the specific context. I've used it because the sentiment also mirrors what I see as Anum's stance on the entire Wim Hof business empire. It's pretty much the exact same words that Anum told me back in December 2015 when he said that he could fire his whole family and still run a profitable Wim Hof business. But more on that in a second. Remember when I told you that Wim isn't a great businessman and wants to be left in peace to explore the science and deepen his own practice? Well, that means that for the most part, Wim doesn't have any control over his own business. 
In fact, he's entirely checked out. He has told me that he has never even been on his own website and that Anum has blocked him on all social media channels. Anum controls the Instagram feed, the Facebook feed, and everything that you see Wim write on Twitter. That's right, Wim has no idea what his image looks like from the outside. Effectively, there's a firewall between what Wim wants to teach when you meet him in person and what gets out to the outside world. Indeed, whenever Anum starts to catch heat for his lack of practice, or where there's a particularly unfortunate public falling out between him and his father, Anum posts fawning accounts of their father-son relationship on Instagram. And this is, you know, a little weird, because while I don't doubt that Wim loves his son, it is strange for the son to write up his father's praise and then broadcast it out to 2.9 million followers of Wim's, especially when Wim can't even see this. One reason for needing all that control uh, is that Inner Fire, it doesn't actually sell breathwork or ice immersion, which are the key tenets that Wim teaches. Those things have been around since the earliest days of yogic training and stoic philosophy, and they can't be trademarked patented, copywritten. Instead, the value of inner fire comes from the brand, the images of Wim doing crazy things in ice and motivating other people to learn to do the same things that he does, the things that make him vibrant. You could argue that all of the money that the organization has ever earned ultimately comes down to the value of Wim Hof's name. Now, over the last few weeks, a few current and former Wim Hof Method instructors told me that Anum threatened to sue them for advertising that they were teaching Wim's methods without official permission, and that they were violating a trademark owned by Inner Fire. I wanted to find out what his case was, so I did a search of the U.S. trademark database and found two interesting pieces of information. First is that Inner Fire has owned the words Wim Hof Method for several years. But I was more than a little surprised to learn that as of July 5th, 2022, this year, Inner Fire also owns the name Wim Hof too. Just the name Wim Hof. This means that, in theory, Inner Fire can sue anyone who uses the word Wim Hof in the context of any of the terms listed in this filing, from yoga exercises, to t-shirts, to software, to just physical exercises, pretty much anything at all. According to the filing, Wim Hof signed the official paperwork. And so it's not fraud. And this might make sense in some contexts. It's entirely normal for a celebrity to have rights to their own names as they build a business around their work. But that only really makes sense when the celebrity is in full control of that company, or at least partially in control of the company. So this led me to my next question. Who owns Inner Fire? Finding this information took a little work. I ended up at the equivalent of the Dutch Chamber of Commerce, a place called KVK, digging through corporate records, following one shell company to another, and spending far too much money on international phone calls. But in the end, I found these documents. The first is the official registration for Interfire BV, which is the company listed on the U.S. trademark. I wanted to figure out how many people sat on the board of directors and what percentage stakes each owner had. But there wasn't a board of directors listed. Instead, the entire company was owned by an entity called Hoff Holding BV. So I pulled up that record and found only one name listed. Hoff, Anum, Marivel Maria, Anum Hoff. I wondered if there had been some sort of mistake. So I emailed the Dutch Chamber of Commerce just to be sure that there wasn't some other way that Dutch companies disclose ownership. And they told me, at least on the official paperwork, Anum owns 100% of everything. This means that Anum's sisters, brothers, and Wim himself are nothing more than employees in the Hoff Empire. Several years ago, Anum told me that, uh, quote, he could fire them all and still be just fine. 
but I didn't really believe him at the time. But now that the ownership is in black and white on these papers, then, well, why couldn't he? I mean, he owns his father's name. He controls the social media feed. Anum owns every asset in the Wim Hof Empire, including, I believe, Wim's house in the village of Stru. In fact, from a corporate standpoint, his father is more of an obstacle than an asset. Now, sure, you say, but how much money does owning the name and company Wim Hof really make him? Well, I'm glad you asked. According to the publicly available profit and loss statement that the Dutch companies have to file and anyone can access for just a few euros, in the most recent year available, which was 2020, Inner Fire claimed that all of their assets combined were worth 7.8 million euros, while Hoff Holdings, BV, had a further 6.9 million euros in value. So assuming I'm reading these statements correctly and something is not getting lost in translation, that means that the Hoff business was worth 14.7 million euros in 2020, or about $16.8 million. With movie deals and expanding programs around the world, I would guess that they're worth even more in 2022. Now, to be fair, despite what's on the paperwork, it's clear that Wim has benefited from his decade working with his son. Inner Fire paid off his $30,000 debt pretty quickly, and now Wim lives in a house in the bucolic village of Stru, which is quite an upgrade from the days when Wim was homeless or in a gardening shed. Yeah, he lived in a gardening shed, like a little gnome hut. But when I asked Wim specifically what he thought of Anum owning the entire company, Wim was adamant that there had been a mistake. I understand, but you say that you're 55% owner, but I looked at the corporate records and you're not listed there. Only Anum is listed. 50, 50, 50. No. Nope. It is. Uh, notarial. It is uh, done. That it is not in the records. That is of the past. That is maybe our not being diligent enough to uh, make that uh, uh, out in the records right now. But for the tax office, etc., it's all very clear. But if Wim really thinks that he owns half the company, then the paperwork isn't clear at all. It tells the exact opposite story of what he believes, at least as of February 2022. Anum is still listed as the sole shareholder and director. Wim doesn't even have a share in his own name. Oh, I have to look into that then. But, but even this is hardly the end of the story. Because the organization isn't just about ownership of the brand and the practices, but about the entire community of, according to Wim, 1,600 certified instructors. After I posted my video that expressed my very mild criticisms of the method, along with how 10 years of practice changed my life, I started getting messages from instructors and practitioners around the world with a variety of different stories. Some people said they loved the method, but were a little weirded out by how focused it had become on brand identity. When, I, when we first went there, it was all about freedom. It was all about freedom. It was all about getting this out there and doing it, putting your stamp on it. And then all I can say from my own feeling is, once the realization of this came in, boom, your freedoms were canceled. On Reddit, commenters had pointed words for Anum. But more important were the half dozen messages from high-level Wim Hof Method instructors who said they had seen Anum ruin the careers of instructors who crossed him and were worried that he would do it to them too. While I spoke to many, most people were afraid to go on the record for fear of retaliation. One level three instructor said he would talk if I disguised his voice, saying that he believes that Anum will remove the certifications of any instructor who voiced any concerns at all. Let's call him Deep Freeze. So a level three is supposed to be an ambassador of the brand. After paying thousands of dollars in fees and many hours of training, this instructor flew too close to the sun. He did something, he still doesn't know exactly what, and was demoted for using the Wim Hof brand inappropriately. 
When he pushed back to show that his rules were in the code of conduct, the company ignored him and never issued any sort of explanation. It felt capricious. Yeah, you know, he'll yell like, he'll yell at people to get his own way, he'll bully people to get his own way, and he'll use the cake if it seems right, but really he's just going to tell people you're doing it my way or not. Mm -hmm. Like that's my biggest complaint as an instructor is, is I'd like to have a bit of ownership of this. Wim Hof Method instructors don't only invest money, but a tremendous amount of time in building up the organization around the method. They are ardent practitioners. They're also independent contractors building their own businesses and leading workshops all around the world. They tithe 10% of their earnings back to the office. The instructors I spoke with had a litany of complaints, but they boiled down to two main issues. The first one was something that I've seen firsthand myself. When anyone gets close to Wim Hof and starts practicing and excelling at the method and draws attention to their achievements and self-experimentation, Anum does what he can to stifle the relationship. Uh, they take an awfully big cut of what you are doing and they threaten you on a regular basis with lawsuits. On a practical level, this means that an instructor who has been drawn into the method and made it their lifestyle, they get cut off at the knees. They begin to experiment and approve the method, and then, well, all their work goes to naught. John Carstairs was one of the first formal instructors and wanted to follow Wim's advice and start growing the method organically. He wanted to experiment. He wanted to make everything better. Was that Wim said, that's it. You've done your test, you're instructors, you're free. Get out there, spread the message and do the thing. You know, put your stamp on this method. And we all thought, fucking yes. Within a year, it became this whole manifesto and all these guidelines where you you cannot do this, you cannot put your stamp on it, you cannot do this. You have to follow a, a, a certain criteria within your workshops that all workshops are the same so that everyone in every land has the same experience. But like, how do you diversify with that? How do you create that knitting of a community when you're all just robotically stuck in this pillbox saying, we want this, you do that, and that's how you do it. In order to get certified, an instructor has to sign a series of manifestos and waivers that explicitly instruct Wim Hof teachers to protect the Wim Hof brand. This means that instructors aren't supposed to photograph themselves with Wim. They can't use his name on their social media or even talk to the mainstream media or involve it in the promotional materials at all without explicit permission from Wim Hof Central Command, i.e. Anum himself. Anum wants to see the Wim Hof method become a franchise opportunity, while the community wants to explore the joys of the practice. Historically, the restrictions have had a chilling effect on spreading Wim's message. There have been some breakups with Wim Hof and other similar breathwork businesses, including with Laird Hamilton's XPT, with Brian McKenzie, James Nestor, Casper Vandermullen, and Joe Dispenza, none of which wanted to go on the record with me about the topic, but their stories are traded like gossip among the community of Wim Hof breathworkers. And when Anum decides that he doesn't like a direction that someone is going, he acts swiftly without explaining his reasoning. One instructor explains what happened when he was demoted from a coveted level three spot. Didn't call me, didn't talk to me, didn't say, hey, this is what I'd like, just fuck no, not you, and no explanation. And that's always been the thing is, is they may slap us in the face, but they give a shit as to why. The second complaint that instructors seemed to share was that Inner Fire demands that they work for free at the annual Wim Hof Winter Travel Event, which is sort of like the mecca for all Wim Hof aficionados. This winter travels are a multi-week affair where hundreds of people come from all over the world to learn the method directly from Wim Hof and the instructors that he has specifically trained. It costs about $2,500 to attend, 
basically it's the same experience that I did with Wim Hof back in 2013 with breath work and ice immersion and eventually a bare chested hike up Mount Snezka. But the instructors complain that they have to work up to two weeks a year without pay to maintain their status in the organization. With, this is obviously a money hustle as far as inner fire is concerned, not the least bit interested in helping people, changing lives, getting people out of pain, turning things around, everything that Wim speaks to, inner fire is not about. Like people were paying 2,500 euros and there were 125 people. So that's over a quarter million euros. Their overhead's not that much and they're not paying these instructors anything. They want them to come work for free. And if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Actually, it's a little more than that. It's 312,000 euros to be exact. And this year it's rumored that there will be 300 spots over three weeks, which comes out to a gross of $810,000. That's a whole lot of money to make and not pay instructors for their time. It's worth noting, however, that according to an email from Anum on January 16th, 2023, Inner Fire will cover up to $250 in flight expenses for their European instructors, as well as room, board, and certification fees for instructors who volunteer to work the winter travels. Instructors get hit in three ways. They have to pay for their training and a yearly $500 fee to keep their certification up. They can't use their proximity to WIM to help them with their own independent businesses, and they have to work at, for Inner Fire for free at the winter travels. You know who else makes people work for free? Cults. And investigating cults is a bit of a thing for me. In my book, The Enlightenment Trap, I wrote about how organizational structures of a, a place called Diamond Mountain University, a neo-Buddhist community that some have called a cult, demanded that its students contribute an exorbitant amount of money uh, to their meditation centers, along with endless, mindless work to keep the flock docile. A month ago, I was working on the re-release, and as I re-recorded the audiobook, I worked at, on several new chapters of the manuscript, and I was surprised to see similarities emerge between my days debunking charlatan gurus and what is happening right now in the way that the Wim Hof method exerts control over its followers. Now, despite that history, I want to say for the record that I do not think that the Wim Hof method is actually a cult. Wim doesn't think of himself as a guru. He doesn't say that he's enlightened. Those are not his teachings. That said, Wim is not the official mouthpiece of the organization that bears his name. And it's entirely possible that the strict controls and rebranding of the real Wim Hof into a social media star could start to take on cult-like characteristics for people who do not actually know him. When I spoke to Wim about the problem with the instructors not getting paid, he was beside himself. The thing that touched me was that these people have to go to maintain their level of instructorship and they are in a really tight situations financially, that to me is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That to me is a wrong protocol. And I am going to do something about that. This is a good step, but it's unfortunate that it only comes out once an investigative journalist starts digging into the business affairs. After my last video, Inner Fire gave their instructors free access to the Wim Hof Method app as a sign of appreciation. Now, that was awesome, but I shouldn't have to be the mechanic of change. I am not the mechanism for change. At the end of the day, the problem comes down to leadership. It could be that while Enum Hof was exactly the right person to build Inner Fire from the ground up, the person who stabilized his father's personality and formalized his teachings, he is not the person to take the Wim Hof method into the future. Indeed, it is incredibly common for successful companies to switch CEOs after their startup phase is over. Maybe Anum could take a hefty seven-figure payment for his services and then hand over the reins to a regular practitioner who can better enact Wim's vision. Indeed, Wim has been thinking along these lines for a while. 
that's possibly that somebody else is going to take over who's got more brains to uh, put a thing like this into the real uh, hemisphere of the, the, the technical uh, hemisphere created in the world, which makes money, which makes uh, things spreading, which uh, makes it available uh, uh, to all the institutions in the world. So Adam is not that person. For that, that it was good to spark with Adam to bring it up. But Adam is not a professional in that uh, way in any, uh, yeah, no. That's why he got so uh, personal with uh, mm -hmm. all these people who try uh, to benefit, uh, to uh, cooperate, to co-create. He is to just, yeah, cutting their heads off mm -hmm. every time. That's the only thing that he does. Now, it doesn't even need to be some fancy Silicon Valley style CEO who takes over the reins. And here's an idea. Why not have a woman at the helm of the Wim Hof Method? In fact, Inner Fire could do that and still remain a family business if Anum simply passed the reins over to his younger sister, Isabel Hoff, who has already done a tremendous job building out the training platform. And from what I understand, regularly practices the method herself. More importantly, Isabel is a genuinely nice person. I've had many interactions with her over the years. Wim's partner and the mother of his most recent child, Aaron White, might also be a good fit. I can't tell you exactly how the Wim Hof Method is going to develop in the future. I can't tell you if Wim is right, and there's some corporate document that gives him ownership behind the scenes that was never filed with the Dutch government. And I can't be sure that if Wim presses for it, that he will ever truly be able to get out from under Anum's controlling influence. But I can say this. I believe that Wim Hof's teachings have been a benefit to the world. I think that the legacy that Wim leaves behind will depend on what happens in the next few years at Inner Fire. After all, the ice and the cold have taught me so much. And at the end of the day, no one owns them. It's not Anum's or mine or even Wim's. Those lessons belong to all of us. About 10 days after the first version of this video came out, a lot has happened over at Inner Fire. First was that, of course, a lot of my videos were removed from YouTube, only to pop up in new places all over the internet. Uh, I keep an updated list on my link tree, which you can find on my Instagram and wherever link tree is. Second, and more importantly, current and former instructors who had sent me hundreds of messages of support began to organize. While many of them are still scared to speak publicly, Inner Fire has begun to restructure. Anum Hoff assures me that there's a private deal between him and Wim and his sisters to divide up ownership of the company. This could mean he might even make it official on the government paperwork after 13 years of, let's say, notorial omissions. Second, the Academy plans to form a sort of grievance board for instructors to raise issues that are important for the community. They've also created a new way for instructors to teach the method for free on a charity basis. Anum Hoff tells me that he's already on the search for a new chief operating officer who will take over many of the day-to-day -day responsibilities that Anum has managed to date. There are still a lot of questions on how these plans will be implemented, but I am at least hopeful that this is the beginning of a better, more resilient inner fire down the road. A first indication that things are actually changing might be how they respond to this video and if they continue a campaign to silence the things that I report on. Thank you so much for watching all of this. Please, please subscribe down below. Uh, there are probably going to be updates, but if I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't mind reporting on some of the things that I already had to do, like my book on napping and the book I just re-released called The Enlightenment Trap. Here's to me hoping that I don't have to see you again later in this update shirt. Thanks a lot.